All right, this uh, this match is against Durnium. They're playing uh, uh, Brunor Battlehammer. This is uh, equipment's list. Brunor, he gives he can equip things for free, and uh, he gives two zero to everything that's equipped. They're actually playing Dwarves Tribal here, which is actually really cool because I'm starting to remember this match now as I record this. And so we just start off with Inquisition of Kozilek, then we drop Valky, God of Lies, instead of the Tybalt side, obviously, because he's seven mana. All right, we take consider taking the Fairgrounds Warden here. But we're kind of looking, kind of looking. Jewel Mine Overseer is new. We take that instead. She spawns a bunch of seven dwarves into your deck. And she gets, she's like an anthem for uh, druids. Or uh, not druids, excuse me, dwarves. Because they're playing dwarf tribal. So... They play Dwarf Hold Champion, uh, it's a 3-2, or 3-1, and then it gets 2-2 two, two Defense if it, uh, or Toughness, if it's equipped, and then it's got Ward, so, it's like Ward 1, nothing too exciting, but it's a pretty decent card nonetheless. Uh, Fairgrounds Warden is a capture, like, creature, is one of those, like, white creatures that, you know, Skyclave Relic. Or not, well, I wouldn't say Skyclave Apparition. Uh, like, um, Brutal Cathar. It's probably more at speed. Just one of those capture creatures. So, um, they, they just say go. So, unfortunately, we don't hit a land. And without a land, we can't kind of advance our plays. We're kind of hoping they block here. They don't, unfortunately. His big splendor is a lot like a professional face breaker. It's like when you block, he, when you get blocked, he gives you treasures. And it's any of your creatures. But it's only once per turn, like once per like instance of attacking. So you can, if you have first strike, you can get it twice. We get a land, shock it in. Then we play Skyclave Relic. They play Sword of the Realms, and this is kind of where we start to lose the game. Because Sword of the Realms is really good. Because it equi as an equipment, it gives 2-0. And I believe Vigilance. I'm not 100% on the Vigilance part. But the most important thing is, is when something dies while it's equipped with Sword of the Realms, it just gets bounced back to your hand. So it kind of slowly just like works as like this like pseudo reanimation effect. Oh yeah, it gives Vigilance here. You can see it on the screen. So, But it's like a pseudo reanimation effect where you just kind of like constantly keep recurring resources and an extra two attack is menacing like it's problematic to the point where you have to start blocking it like that's a lot of attack in this mode maybe not like regular commander you can maybe get away with it but not really because he's getting an extra two with uh uh brunor too so which brunor you know He's a good commander. I still haven't played him yet. I might, I'll probably play him soon on stream. But he's good. Honestly, he's really good. I think out of like a lot of the equipment commanders, he's still one of the better ones. And he's only an uncommon. So don't be afraid to pick him up. Because um, we go ahead and play Cassius. Discard our Dreadhound. Dreadhound has like a... Um, uh, it's kind of like a Sir Conrad the Grimm's effect. If you remember that guy. But he he just like pings him for one if creatures enter the graveyard. When he comes into play, he mills three. And he's a 6-6 six, six demon hound. We play him because he's a demon. So, and Raphael is a lord for demons. So, he's a lord effect for demons. We go ahead and block the lord hold champion here. Probably wasn't too wise on our part, obviously. Because that's, that's where it started spelling our doom, honestly, is Sword of the Realms. And this red list, I don't really have enough artifact removal. But that's where we definitely started going wrong. Is if you can ignore the Storms of the Realm target, you probably should. Most likely that you can't. Like, we got a few artifact removals in this list. Because we got, like, Torch Fiend, which is a devil that, uh... You can sacrifice him and he blows up an artifact. So that's pretty cool. 
but unfortunately we didn't peel him fast enough. You know, we just couldn't quite get there. We got Bedevil on the list too. Bedevil reads that it destroys target artifact creature enchantment. Or not enchantment, excuse me, planeswalker. And that tool card exemplar, he checks if like uh you have equipment out and then he gains stats for it. He's one of those like one mana effects like if X, I'm big for one mana. Blue has a few of them and uh, white has a few of them too. We go ahead and sacrifice a Raphael here because it's uh, affected by uh, Heliod's Punishment. Which is actually a pretty good card yet. You don't see it all too often, but it's a good card. It reads that you get four task counters on it and it shuts off the creature until they remove the task counters. Because it's a play off of Hercules being burdened by the stone where he's got to like carry it up the hill and then eventually he like tricks the dude into like um not carrying it up the hill basically is what he does he just doesn't feel like doing it anymore so pretty sure he like pawns it off on somebody else if i remember correctly not 100 sure i haven't um read that some in a long time but yeah it's another thing with that uh, dwarf that dwarf our uh, dwarf load champion because she's actually a human but she draws you cards too because she does the uh, exile effect she's a mythic though so jewel mine overseer because she's a human noble or she's lording over the dwarves because she probably pays them like really poor wages you know their families can't eat they don't have eye care, you know. That's pretty bad, not having eye care, actually. It's pretty unfair for the dwarves, especially if they're, like, in the mines. Because there's probably, like, you know, bats down there. And bats, bats can be scary for dwarves. Because they're scared of bats. Because I said so, that's why. So, we kind of just hold back here. All right, as we stated before, doors are scared of bats. So them not having eye care, that's not really fair of the jewel mine overseer. Because you can tell by the art in her picture that she's not a nice lady. She doesn't have the dwarves, you know, the little dwarf children's, like, you know, minds, hearts, and souls that, you know, at thought. She just cares about, you know, oh, well, the dwarves can just mine gems for me. And even though she wears that armor like that, she's probably, like, really fat, you know? So that's not, that's not, like, you know, attractive to be mean to dwarves and be really fat, you know? And I'm not saying fat in, like, a, oh, well, she's overweight. I'm saying fat as in, like, her soul is just, you know, ugly. She hasn't showered in, you know, three years. She can't keep a man, you know. She's overall miserable with herself. It's really just the way that it goes. It's the natural order of things. So we bowl ahead and um, do the last point of damage to the jeweled overseer. It gets sent to the graveyard. So... Sword of the Realms again, that's where our downfall pretty much comes this match is that we have Sword of the Realms and we can't ever get rid of it. That's, that's the problem with this match. That's why we lose. Because Sword of the Realms, since we steal it with um, Angrath, because his minus three is uh, Act of Treason effect, but if it costs three or less mana, you sacrifice it. So it's kind of like mixing Act of, act of Treason with, uh... It's kind of like mixing Act of Treason with, uh... Uh, Claim the Firstborn or whatever. Or there's like, a, there's like another sacrifice effect that does that. But, yeah, they just play the Fairgrounds Warden again. Like I said, Sword of the Realms is why we lose here. Because it just allows you to just play the grind game. You know, you have like just basically unlimited resources. And it only quits for two mana. Because the other side of it is Halvar got a battle. And he 
basically gives like equip creatures uh, double strike. Like we kind of stick it out for this match. This match probably went on a little bit longer than it needed to, but we kind of just like kept sticking it out because why not? You know, like that's that's the problem with the the sword. Is like I said, it just gives you unlimited grind game. So because a lot of this deck can like take the damage and go upstairs with it, you know, go face. So we go ahead and play uh, our draw um, Charm Breaker Devils here. This guy returns random instants or sorceries from your graveyard, and then when you cast one, he gets four attack. That's what he does. He's a pretty cool card. It's just like you have to do everything at random, so that kind of is not the best at times. And I think, like, throughout the match, we kind of probably maybe trying to destroy their creatures around the, the sword instead of trying to engage with the sword, but it promotes so much damage, it's hard to do that. So, anyways, they uh, play Brunor again. They opt to switch the equip of the sword to their flying guy. We take 11 here. Which is huge. And because they have lifelink, they um, get back in the match real quick. I think here, I mean, it's pretty much the end of us. This is pretty much the last turn for us, so. Yeah, and they uh, have another 2-2 two -two lifelink or pretty decent stuff, you know. Because even then, like, the... Uh, Life linking flying guy has first strike too, because we could have swung in with our charm breaker devils because it had 13 attack there, but it's just gonna get first strike blocked and then not get any damage across. And then, so this is the last turn, they just kind of play that, uh, it's like Forsaken Crossroads. It's like a rare land, it's, it's pretty good. So, it's, def it's a color fixing land. Actually, I think it's an uncommon. So it's, it's a pretty decent pickup if you need some color fixing. We opt to block here with the uh, uh, Mayhem. Spawn a Mayhem. Yeah, we just spawn back in Farewell, our Dark Ritual. And yeah, we're, we're just done here. We just kind of like stick this out longer than we needed to. Draw a card, get a Fatal Push. Fatal Push kills the Dwarf. That just gets bounced back to the hand anyways. So, like I said, that uh, sword pretty much giving them unlimited grind game is like where they get us in this match. So, Sword of the Realms, if you have it, make sure you kind of put it in your whitelist if you really don't mind equipments. Because even outside an equipment-centric deck, it's kind of just good. Honestly, it really is. Because Halvar, the Halvar side, he really is only good for equipments, but the sword, he, it's just good, honestly. It's only two mana to equip. It makes something, like, you just constantly bounce it back. And then they get the Immortal Sun here. And I think we block with Raphael here, I'm pretty sure. No, we don't. Okay. Yeah, we're, we were done for for a while. And we get Fatal Push back, that's good. So we just blow this guy up again. Send him to the graveyard. And then he gets returned to the hand. Cycle continues. The cycle continues. So then we draw a card here with Castle Block Flame. Play. Get Devil's Play. Devil's Play is pretty cool. It's an X spell. We keep letting our Charm Breaker Devils come in. With their lifelink. They go ahead and play Fiend Lash. Fiend Lash is a really cool equipment, honestly. It's really, really cool. They play Roddy Crew. Roddy Crew can make a bunch of devil, or uh, it makes a bunch of dwarf tokens. And I think otherwise they can like crew and equip, equip, equip us like weapons and it can uh, crew vehicles.
and Fiend Lash too. Fiend Lash is really cool because it's like gives first strike or no gives reach and then if it, uh if they take damage it like reflects the damage back. They just say uh we've had enough and they just send the whole team. So this is where we lose. Good game. That was fun. Ruin our battle hammer, you should try them sometime. I like this version of the list because it was dwarf tribal. I hate this match, I switched microphones. But the win at the bottom means win or loss, and then the match length is 10 minutes and 6 seconds. I tried to do that so, like, you ever watch my stuff, then you're like, I don't want Trigger, so you know if you can finish the entire thing if you're that type of person. So we go ahead and start off with this a small. And they play a mountain and a ragamon. Now we kind of screw up here by playing out Castle Aquiline. And because we had Agras Rampage, we could have uh, destroyed Ragamon and sent to the graveyard by them sacrificing it. They play Marlin Territory. We're thinking about playing Spiteful Prankster, which he is pretty good. But we opt to play Black Market Connections instead. Spiteful Prankster, he gets his first strike if it's our turn, he's at 3 2. And then whenever a creature gets destroyed and sent to the graveyard, or a dies effect, he uh, pings stuff for one damage. Players are Planeswalkers, not creatures. We're thinking here, thinking here, thinking here. Plays a, plays a forest. Plays Titania, voice of God. She's on the radio, cause I'm on the radio. She's singing for the voice of God today. Did you see her stunning performance last Friday? I'm the voice of Gaia. She owns the building, so... We're thinking about playing Rackles and Biter here. But we have not to, instead we play Prosper Tombo. Rackles and Biter is insane. I think he's good even outside the Devil's List, because if you get him early, he can really, like, start promoting a lot of damage early. You can see me talking, like in this video, I'm just kind of using my Twitch stream VODs. But this is an edited YouTube video. I can't do much video editing, but I do audio editing. Because I don't have the equipment for video editing. At least they play Lurking Predators. What Lurking Predators does is whenever we cast a spell, they look at the top card of their library. And if it's a creature, they can cast it for free. If not, they just put it in their hand. I know they don't put it in their hand, they put it at the bottom of the library. Burning Predators is alright. Like, if you hit really well with Burning Predators, it's like one of the best cards ever. Because it's kind of like the Rhystic Study of Green, where it's like constantly punishing you, like your opponent plays like three spells per turn. With those big dumb Simic decks that ramp and, you know, pull out their whole hand in one turn. And all of a sudden, Lurking Predator gives you, like, four free creatures. Like, there's nothing better than that, right? That's insane. Alright, we have Black Market Connections. We piano it. Pick every single option. Now here, we're kind of thinking we drew, uh... Burn down the house, and then we also drew Storm's Wrath, but we opt to play Hellrider instead. We're the Predators. And we play Hellrider here as well. Which again, he's got haste. His Echo Cross is discard a card. Echo just means you pay the cost. The next upkeep that he's around. And if you don't, you sacrifice them. If you do pay the cost, then you don't have to, uh, 
You don't have to do it again. You only do it one time. And discarding a card in the lot of lists is not that bad, honestly, because you have to kind of want to be doing that anyways in like a reanimator list. You can kind of control a little bit with Bulls and Krieger. They block our Hell Rider here, because we're promoting lethal, so they're going to block a few things. Because Hell Rider states whenever a creature that we control attacks, he deals damage to each player or planeswalker, whatever we choose, depending on how many creatures we're attacking with. So if we attack with like four creatures, he goes ahead and initiates with four damage. Raphael gives us doubles when creatures die. If they get sent to the graveyard, even if they uh, get sent to the graveyard from our hand or our library, he gives us creatures for it. They get our arcane signet here, and then they get our orcas. So they get worth pretty good stuff here. Our last attack may be a little bit ambitious, but we're, we're still in really good shape because we gained so much life with this list. It's kind of the whole point of this list is basically being about as aggressive as realistically possible. And I'll just be in my recklessly down. This way first. We just set our shapeshifters in our double. Because regardless, we're gaining health, so. And lot with the right amount, it's kind of like outlived its purpose. Here, we've been faced because we can't uh, destroy any of the creatures with the damage. The Lurking Predators, the old land, and they put it at the bottom. Yeah, Casualty, when you Casualty, you sacrifice whatever X is, and then you copy the spell. But it's not like a casting copy. They put it at the bottom, all will be one. That card is like whenever they gain counters, they can ping for damage. We have to just start plussing on mix list the adversary here, I think the other one will plus as well. Yeah, we plus them. Because those pluses, they either discard a card or take two damage, and then if we have a devil, demon, a devil or a demon, uh, we heal to life, so. On mix list, the adversary is pretty good. He's good because he's three man and he can come down really early. Like, that's what makes him good. Is he kind of underwhelming, like, in the later parts of the game? Sure, he's very underwhelming, but if he comes down early enough and starts cooking, like, he can be pretty menacing. Like, my fiery emancipation. Let's finally emancipation triple fives their damage. But it triples like the other play against these types of effects and magic. It's like if it's like it deals triple damage instead, each one counts as three. So you'll have like in a situation where there's a tally here, it does twenty one damage, but it does it does three damage seven times. Which equals 21, not 21 damage in one lump sum. Spiral Brave Science makes he doesn't activate off himself. But we get a double. We get a piano. They call him. We 
we get the treasure token. I have to like burn down the house, get into three devil tokens this time instead, because that's all we need. Because we're gonna win the game right here anyways. So people have a last net pop next to us. I'm pretty sure they just take the two. I don't know. They just gone. Because they're dead here anyways. So Or do we destroy the opposing player? They're gone. Forever. So we win that one. That one was pretty fun. Alright, that's what we lose. Second thing, Like, 
Uh, tempo now is some spark and with that. It's right on that thing. I'm going to have it, uh, I'm contemplating using a double play, which is an X play, you can get X into it, and it can feel damage to anything. But we opt to, uh, not play it, because Miriam's got two work, work days, you have one extra game for everything to turn into. We just opt to, uh, go ahead and, uh, use Pilfer right here. We're looking, looking, looking to get rid of all the hobbles because he's a dragon, so Miriam will break two of them. And I think Miriam, my guess, is like a very good one. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Alright, it's our turn. We attack. We attack with the devil because it's just one or more doubles. That's the thing about Sir Zopa is the plus to his card is like his tokens, once you get one from once you get the ball rolling on one of them, you can kind of just keep setting in their direction and keep incrementally gaining on the one damage because they'll probably get blocked off. Or maybe like, you know, send smaller creatures to the graveyard by a damage. So we can start our demos play. It's not that big a deal. We've got a flashback. It's a little expensive on this flashback, but the play is it's got doubles in the name. It's, it's a decent card, but nonetheless, because you can pass it twice and you can go upstairs with it, you know, to your opponent's face. And then it can close up the game for you. We played the first half of the Monster Daniel. That lets them, like, look through their, uh, early point second half of them. Because the first half of Monster Manual is, like, you know, like, five cards, and then you put a creature in your graveyard, or from a one to go into your hand. And then Monster Manual is four mana, and you can tap two, and you can play a creature for free from your hand. Mind you, it's play, so it doesn't count cast effects. We're going to have a proc, so here, Rox is like a death bunker comes down and it discards a card from our opponent's hand. If they discard a land, it takes three damage. And if it doesn't escape, it's half of us as itself. It's the counterpart of girl. It works really well in this Raphael list because when Rox is sacrifices itself, we get another devil. Go ahead and send five life link for our girl. Make another devil. We get rid of generous transformation, which is really nice. But yeah, I mean, Tor's off is like, he's a hit and mess at the same time. Painful Pondering, they take five, because Painful Pondering stays every time they cast as well. They either have to take five, or pay five life, or it's harder for them. So it's one of those, like, you can't ignore the card because it's inevitable, right? Like, it's going to eventually probably build enough damage. Unless you're, like, in heavy dedicated life game decks, or you're drawing a lot of cards. And you don't have to care about it, but I play it through those free cast decks. I mean, those five color commanders that like just free cast a bunch. That sort of really good. But it normally works against like half of them. It works against like Jota, and then there's like uh, Gold, Silver Sands. A lot of them it doesn't actually work all that well against, unfortunately. Because a lot of their effects are play effects. They're not caps. Like, uh, Reading Rainbow, has to be a bridge, Rainbow, or whatever. And we can see here, because they're going on board. So that is my plugs. You can look at the stuff if you want to. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching till the end. Bye-bye.